Hello bishes, welcome back to another draw with me. Today we are going to be talking about something that I feel like a lot of artists have or still struggle with whenever they reach out to someone that they might look up to in the art world and they ask, how do you improve your art? How do you get better? And the answer is just practice and there's nothing more infuriating than a vague answer. But honestly, it's understandable because a lot of artists are just super busy with their lives. It's really impossible to respond to every single person who asks them this question. And I can see why the answer of just practice is kind of like just an easy answer to give because it's kind of true, but in ways I also think it's kind of not true. Some of you may have heard this quote, and I don't even know the original creator of this quote, so if you know, please let me know in the comments below, but it goes along the lines of, practice doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent. And I do agree with this quote to an extent, of course, because I do think that there are some exceptions to this. And a great example of this is when I was younger, all I ever drew was anime and cute girls, and that was all I ever practiced and tried to perfect at because I did not know about broadening my horizons. And if I had never woken up to realize that I needed to expand my drawing abilities to other things, if I wanted to get into a good art school and get into the animation industry, then I would still probably just be drawing anime and pretty girls to this day. You know, maybe if my younger self knew about something like Skillshare, who I'm super thankful to say is the sponsor of today's video, maybe I would have fallen out of that trap of only drawing the same damn thing all the time and learned to expand my drawing abilities at an earlier age, but you know, it's too late, I can't go back in time and I can only move forward from this point on. But for those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of creative classes available for artists and makes learning super accessible now, especially for people who cannot afford to go to art school, but I'll get into that more later towards the end of this video where I'll show you a class that can potentially help artists like you and me. So now you might be wondering, well, if practice doesn't make perfect and if that's not the way I'm going to improve in art, then what does? Like, again, I'm not saying that practice doesn't make perfect. I think we just misdirect the term practicing towards, oh, just keep practicing drawing hands and you'll just keep get better at drawing hands or just keep practicing drawing poses and you'll just get better at it. And while that is true, I feel like someone can always be practicing the wrong way of doing things, assuming that, hey, I'm still just putting in the effort to doing it, but why am I not improving? Well, it's not always about the effort you put into consistently doing something because that ultimately forms a habit, not improvement. At the end of the day, it's not really about practicing drawing. It's more about practicing the discipline to remain diversified in the types of things that you draw that I believe is what can more efficiently lead to improving in art. In addition to that, I also feel like you have to be open to criticism and feedback, and that is not to be confused with hate comments or people just making fun of your art and not giving you an actual structural way to to improve. It's more of like reaching out to people who are actually a bit more skilled than you are or professionals in your industry and just asking them for general feedback on how you can make things better. So now you might be wondering, well, if practicing this discipline to just stay diversified in the types of things I draw is what's going to help me improve, like how do you actually put that into play? What am I actually doing throughout the week if I'm not going to just be focusing on drawing hands or faces or just a certain specific thing? Personally, for me, what actually helped me improve at a faster rate was including subjects that I frequently found myself weak in drawing in projects that I knew that I would be pursuing. So for example, if I was going to do a comic on Instagram, but I knew drawing cats was my weakness, I would probably just spend a few days and maybe up to one to two weeks really focusing on the anatomy. Like I would just practice drawing their heads, their faces, their paws, their limbs. Then I would kind of move on to just doing gestures of them, 
poses of them without the whole anatomical structural practices, then I would kind of just start including them in panels of my comics or illustrations if that's what you're doing. Because the thing is, when you include things that you're very weak in drawing into a project that you know you're going to be pursuing anyway, you're pretty much forcing yourself to draw this subject in different ways, in different angles, in different ways you wouldn't have seen them in a standard stock photo that you're referencing off of. To put this in the most simple way that I can explain in this video, in this draw with me, I ultimately want to just draw my cat sleeping next to my colored pencils and sketchbook. But for me to even get to this point a long time ago, I had to really just focus on drawing cats body parts individually to really understand the anatomy. I would just draw their faces, their limbs, just to really focus on, you know, what are these parts of a cat like? But I would then know that there's a point I needed to move on because I don't want to just be drawing cat body parts only and just be known for having these anatomical charts in my sketchbooks of just cat paws and cat faces. I want to actually draw cats doing their things. So I would move on to cats in different poses, like they're sleeping, turned around, walking, facing away from us, just cats doing their things in these gestural poses. And that's kind of a step forward from just focusing on these anatomical body parts. But then once you get into this stage, you're kind of ending up with a sketchbook of just cats floating in space in these various poses, which I think is fine. Like, I think it's so appealing to see these studies of cats where you're not really applying a background or a setting to them and you're just focusing on gestures. That's personally my favorite stage to just stop on, but I know that in order for me to improve on this and just wanting to be able to draw pretty much anything, I have to move on and start applying to drawing a cat in a situation. Like, what is the cat doing in this setting? What is the emotion if there is lighting to it? What is it to evoke the mood of this drawing? Or what are there other things I can do to make this overall illustration of a cat somewhat more appealing than just a basic gestural doodle? And after you do all of these things, I'd highly suggest for you to reach out to a professor, a mentor, a friend, or someone who's just more skilled than you are in this area and ask them for their genuine feedback. Like show them your finished illustration of your cat. Show them your comic that features your cat in many panels. I don't know, something like that. And they'll give you constructive feedback. Now, this is really important because this is where you're going to be given guidance on what you are doing right and what you are doing doing wrong. Usually constructive criticism would say, hey, I think you're doing this greatly, but then this part is something that you can work on. That way you can really narrow down what it is that you're currently still needing to work on more instead of just having a vague answer of like, okay, well, if I drew this cat bad, what does that mean? Am I bad at drawing like the whole body? Am I bad at just drawing the head or what? Someone who gives you the right and the wrong will at least provide you what you're doing right for this moment. And for now, you won't really need to focus on what you're doing right. And you can just focus on what it is that you actually need more improvement on. So getting feedback can be a very scary thing to do because you're putting yourself out there for people to pretty much judge you. And that can be really pressuring and stressful. But just know that if this is somebody that you trust, they're doing this for the benefit of you to grow. And and this is the moment where they're also going to be pointing out the things that you've actually possibly been practicing wrong because you might have been drawing legs of cats 10,000 times before, but you might have been practicing them in the wrong way all this time. And if you were to have been practicing this just on your own without really getting advice from other people, no one's going to be able to tell you what it is you've been doing wrong. And eventually this is just going to become a potentially bad habit in your drawings. And at the end of the day, art is subjective and sometimes people's bad habits in their drawings become their style and that's appealing to people. And I actually think that's great when some artists habits that might be strange to others becomes their very own unique style. There are so many art styles out there that 
break basic anatomical and fundamental skills. But if you're aspiring to be able to pretty much draw anything and you want to be unstoppable when it comes to drawing certain things in certain situations, or if you want to get into animation, especially 2D animation, then trust me, you're really going to have to familiarize yourself with drawing certain subjects and figures in any angle or pose possible. So in summary, I highly suggest for you to really diversify the different things that you're practicing. Practice drawing isolated anatomical parts, practice drawing gestures and poses, but also remember to actually apply everything that you're learning and drawing the figure or animal in a setting or interacting with other things. What is it gonna be like when you're drawing them in a real life space? Then afterwards, get feedback from others, know how they feel about it and whatever they're guiding you on, go back and revisit the steps that you were originally using to practice. The only difference now is that when you go back to revisit this problem area, you're kind of forced to see it in a different light. You can't really practice it the way you've been doing it before because you realize that all this time you've been kind of practicing it wrong, but why? Maybe there's something about the resources that you were using. Maybe it was just not spending enough time on it and now you have the opportunity to spend more time on it. When you go back, really think about, is it the resources that have been misleading you? Is it just you not really clearly understanding something, or maybe you just didn't give it enough TLC. I don't know, everyone's different and that's really up for you to decide on your own art journey. In my previous video, Five Ways to Get Out of Your Comfort Zone, I also briefly go down how you should diversify things from drawing people of different age groups, ethnicities, body shapes, or just different subjects from vehicles to backgrounds to animals to people, and just really familiarizing yourself in every topic possible when it comes to drawing. And that in itself is also a way of diversifying your drawing. But when it comes to really wanting to master a certain thing, there are also within that subject itself different ways to practice drawing it. So going back to the quote, practice doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent. In no way am I denying that practice is something you need to do, but the thing is, is that you should be aware of what it is you're practicing and how you're practicing it, because you could have been drawing something so many times, but for some reason it still doesn't come out believable to your audience. Really reconsider what it is that you're practicing and re-strategize if something's not working for you. So it's not really just just about drawing things over and over and over again. It's about how you're drawing those things over and over. So I feel like most of you already know this artist, but Gabriel Piccolo currently hosts a character illustration class on Skillshare about how to draw them from faces, figures, and clothing. One of my favorite thing about his art is that he always draws his characters in a scenario where there's a setting and interactions between the characters and overall they're just such a vibe. I feel like doing completed illustrations like these is what's going to ultimately help practice practice a bit of everything in one piece. And I would like to gladly offer the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box below where you will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership so you can go out and explore your creativity. There are no ads on Skillshare and they're always launching these new premium classes so you can stay focused. And for an annual subscription, it's less than $10 a month. So if you're wanting to improve your art and you feel like you've hit a roadblock on resources to learn from and you haven't tried out Skillshare yet, definitely check it out. Anyway, as you can see, I tried to pretty much symbolize all of the steps I talked about practicing in this little spread, and I hope that maybe this helped some of y'all out, and I will see you all in the next one. So peace out and stay wholesome, bitches.